Okay. <coughs> I'm just going to clear that out and show you the uh, next step. Uh, I'm just going to show you this next step because this is something that I like my modules to have. Now, remember I put in this uh, component puzzle background. This is an optional step, so I might go a little bit quicker through it. If you're modding along at home, then that's great. Um, well, 15 viewers, it's lovely to have you here, and uh, welcome if you're just joining us to this tutorial on modding container. Now, for this custom assets folder that I, I, uh, I brought in earlier on, there's got a few of these uh, well, custom assets. We've got uh, the buttons that were created by Ash, which are brilliant, and I use on probably most modules, uh, and are really, really handy. Uh, a couple of arrows, I've used, I, these are ones that I made that I used in, um, I've used them in Lightspeed, and I think I used them in the Sun as well. Uh, the same with the moon, there's Ash's wire here, and um, Noah's wire highlight. Uh, again, a couple of triangles that I made for the sun, and a quarter circle, which I think I made for alphabet numbers. Uh, but the main thing we're going to look at here is Tim Wee's model component, because this gives our makes our module look a little bit different from the default. So what I'm going to do is drag it into my ancillary. You'll see it's got a um, an object ch um, childed to it. We're going to take that out because that's the one we want. Break the prefab and then delete the parent object because it's now that contains nothing. We're going to do the same with the surface. Drag it into ancillary. Now the screen has gone white and the reason for that is because the sizes on these are not correct. I'm going to do exactly the same things I did before. Take it out of the parent object and delete the parent. The sizes Aren't, aren't right and this is because of how things are created in Blender and it's not a problem because they are uh, conformed to uh, the size of the module we actually want. So we select both of these, our model component and our surface and we go over to our transform and the bit that says scale and all three need to be 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Again making sure that these are the positions are both set to zero and ciliary and template should still be set to zero. Oh, and as well, we need to rotate these by 180 degrees. What have I done? I haven't really changed much, it seems. Well, just to demonstrate something, I'm just going to make those objects invisible just for a second. This is what we had before, our standard component prefab. I'm just going to take one of my um, standard uh, colours, and I'll tell you a little bit more about these later on. Don't worry, I'm not just glossing over them. Let's just take black for now. If I take that and drag that onto the module, the whole thing goes black. It's a bit different, and I've done this before. I've done this with the sun, so that looks a bit like the basis of the sun. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog would have been a custom texture. One that I do uh, quite a lot, although you might not recognize it, is I'll give it a wooden texture or something like that. And you can do that with these materials. You can just drag them onto your prefab and it will recolor them because they've been UV mapped. Um, it's going to blend to perfection. Uh, yes, you, you can do that, uh, but I've I've sort of got them now and <laughs> don't see the need to anymore. Um, where was that? Yeah. So you can see it's changing the whole thing, though. It's changing the, the, the border and the status light and the surface and everything. So I'm just going to undo a couple and go back to the, the standard. Okay. Now, I'm going to make the component puzzle background invisible, just by ticking this box here, and remake these two visible. That we just created. Now you might already be able to see a difference and tell where this is going. Uh, but now if I take my standard colour, my black, I can either colour the border or the screen. Now if you want it to have a standard border, then again we're going to go back to our search bar and type in component, except instead of bringing in the prefab, we're going to bring in the material, which is the spherical one right here. Drag that onto the border like that. And hey-ho, we've got souvenir. Just like that. So that is how you create a slightly different style of prefab. And I, I must uh, thank Tim Wee profusely for, um, for making this model and for UV mapping it and for making it freely available to everybody. Um, it is just one style of doing it. It is not by any means compulsory. I personally think it's a much better style. It lets you have a lot more going on, but it depends what you're wanting to create with your module. Certainly for the one that we're going to be creating today, um, this is the one we're going to go for. So once you've got that, you can actually get rid of this other component puzzle background. We no longer need that if that's the one we're going to go with. You can just delete, continue, and there we have our brand new souvenir-like module. I'm just going to give that a different uh, a colour. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, materials, standard colours, let's give it a green, and there we go. 
So I've now got a slightly different looking module. I'm going to save it and I'm going to drag it onto the template and you'll see the template down here will change. Okay, it's going to change to the to the green right there. Uh, do, do, do. Check in with the chat. That's a lot of the ones only for my time. I'm assuming it's under the singular lights. I don't know how to use the word. Uh, yes, I think I did use... No, I used a, a plain white border in coffee box. I may have used a wood uh, surface for the for the table that the iPad is sat on. All those woods, incidentally, I've got about 12 of them. They came from a free asset pack from the Unity Asset Store, um, and I've used them in one of my uh, independent projects. So the asset store is great. That's where I got the coffee cup from coffee box from as well, for little things and little trinkets, as is Turbo Squid. So check them out. You can get a lot of things, and a lot of them for free as well, or, or relatively little money. Um, okay, so I've set up my module. In fact, I'm going to give this one... The, um, the black background. The reason I'm going to do that will become clear in just a second. Um, standard colors, black. Okay. And I'm going to drag this back onto my template, save, and I'm going to build it again. I'll press function F6, and it's going to rebuild this module for me. Now, the reason I'm doing this will become very clear in a minute because at this point, our setup, if you like, is is basically done and this step this is quite this is the boring part of modding and so we want to eliminate as much of the boring part as possible by taking it out because this is how we have to do every single time we set up a module how long has that taken me 40 minutes or so um the more you do it the faster you can do it i can set one of these up in, in sort of two or three minutes but it's it's uninteresting and we have to do the same thing every time so i like to save this so the reason i've done that uh, and and just built it right there is because if we now want to make a new project which we do we can now take our master template or master template 2 in this case go duplicate or control C control V and it will copy everything over and we can call this one now um, new project whatever you want to call it First of all, get rid of the build, because that's going to be from a different module. But going back into the assets folder, you'll see everything else has been copied over nicely. So we don't have to do any of that again. What we will have to do is rename our file to new project. And when we go inside the new file, which I'm going to do in just a second after I've closed down that instance of Unity right there, open new project.unity. And you see, we don't need to go through any of that new file setup. We just go new project. And this is as if we're about to start a brand new mod. And this is actually what I recommend you do if you are playing along at home. I don't know how many people are playing along at home, but if you are, then thank you. Um, now, this is the reason I um, changed the, uh, the background to black, because what I'm going to do for this one, this new project, is take this interior wood and put it on there like that. So we've now got... A new uh, thing. Still called template there, so we're going to want to rename that to new project. There are automated ways of doing this, uh, which speed this up, but um, this way works for me. Rename the prefab to new project, drag new project back onto the prefab, and finally we're going to need to go into KM Bomb module, change that to new project and new project. And finally, 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 configure mod new project and new project and from there we save our prefab again by dragging we save the scene by going command s and we build the module by going function f6 it's going to build it again now the reason i'm building this twice for two essentially two test projects is because i want to show you just as it duplicated from one to the other there's our build for new project which i'm going to copy and i'm going to sling into my mods directory. Oh, something I should have said before, as a rule, I always empty this folder, the, the mods folder um, in the contained directory. I always empty that once I'm done testing, every single time, even if I'm going back in. And the reason I do that is because if you leave something in there and then go into the full game through Steam, it will load your local mods in here and your mods in the workshop. And you might end up with two instances of Zoom or two instances of the same module. And it can get very confusing and very messy, especially if we've only got test uh, builds going on in here. So just as a rule to myself, he says as he 
leaves stuff in there. I try and empty this every single time I use it. So I've now got new project and the other one, which was from Master Template 2, template, copy the folder into mods and paste. So I've got my two new mods and a zoom and fire up the game. And hopefully if this has worked, we'll have one with a black background and one with a wood background. Okay, mods only, let's put this up to 11 or so. I think we've crossed this has worked. I say fingers crossed, I'm fairly, fairly confident this has worked. Um, and there we go. So there's our um, template and there's our new project. All right. So you can see it works and they, they build in game no problem at all. So like I said, that is the, the boring bit of modding actually. So if you found that interesting, I'm going to blow your mind at the next bit.